While loops are not that different from for loops, there's a condition. If you meet the condition, you go back to a certain line and you repeat the process over and over again. So here's an example. I have an int called n starting from zero. And I'm going to say while n is below 10, I'm going to repeat a certain line. And that line is n plus plus. Let me put this on the console. C out n and the line I'm going to run this at 5 okay here's the result so nothing complex here now let's start using an input I'm going to get a character array array of characters and I'm just going to say 10 the length of the array and I'm going to say say something Let's also get user input, C in, put it into the array of characters. And remember video number eight, we're only going to input a certain amount of characters less than or equal to the length of the array or the size of the array. And then I'm going to say C out you said and then i'm just going to repeat the data we're going to look at the first letter and if that happens to be q as in quit that's when we get out of the loop so let me create a bull here instead of n bull quit game by default it's false and as long as quit game equals false we're going to keep repeating and if, if the first letter in the array, if that is Q inside the loop, we're going to say quit game equals true. Let me also initialize the first letter. And just by default, it's going to be zero. So if I run this at five, Okay, I'm going to say dog, you said dog, say something, I'm going to say cat, dog, cat, dog, cat, you know, it just goes on and on and on until I say Q, that's when we quit. Let me add another line here just to make it look better. And I'm going to get rid of the line here, just for the looks. Okay, dog, cat, dog, cat, dog, cat, dog, cat, quit. Okay, easy stuff. Now let me point out to something that might be a little confusing. I'm going to limit this to three characters. I'm going to type something a lot more than three characters now. A, B, C, D, E. Oops. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Something like that. And you see something funny happening here. You see that this syntax isn't just about getting some user input and then limiting it to a certain letters, certain amount of letters. It's more about getting the entire buffer, the entire buffer of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, for example. It's about putting that whole thing into the array. We're just doing it in threes. The width is threes. And the last character is used as a null character. And because this is a while loop, we keep going until we run through the entire buffer. To give you a better picture, it's like we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. We get two letters plus one null character. So that's the first result. The next result is, again, two characters plus one null character. That's three. The second result. And we just keep going. Two letters plus one null character, right, until we run all the way to the end. So really, this is just a counting game. In our last video, video number eight, we happened to stop right here. So nothing really mattered after this. But when you put this in a loop, you keep going until you put the entire buffer into the array, and then you get the next keyboard input. But let's just think of a situation where you just want the first character and then clear the rest. Let's say you have 10 characters up here. 
and then you're just going to get the first letter and then clear the rest and then get the next keyboard input. So I might say something like C in ignore and then I'm just going to put an insanely high number here, 10,000. This means that no matter how many letters you type, we're going to ignore it all and then just go straight to the next keyboard input. I'm going to put in another option, next line, N. Remember from video 0.1 that this means next line. You get this when you press enter. What we're saying here is that we're going to ignore 10,000 characters or we're going to keep ignoring until we get to this character. So let's see what happens with this code. F5, I'm going to put in a bunch of random characters. We have an enter here, so we've ignored all the buffers up to this point, and then we went straight to the next keyboard input. So I can say B some random letters. Let me put a breakpoint somewhere at the end. I'm going to press enter. Here's our character array. We can see that we've only read the buffer up to here. But when I continue, we decided to ignore it all and then go straight to the next keyboard input. And most likely, nobody's going to type more than 10,000 characters. But just to be safe, we're going to use this syntax. This just refers to the biggest number of the input characters that your machine can possibly have. In other words, we're just going to ignore the entire buffer. So whether it's 10,000 or the maximum number, it doesn't really matter in most cases. I'm going to run my code again. We're going to have the same result. I'm just going to put in random characters. And we're just going to output the first letter and ignore the entire buffer. So whatever, I, whatever I type in, we're only looking at the first letter, for example. And I'm going to press Q or Q a bunch of other letters. That's going to quit our app. And of course, when we're just looking at the first letters, we don't need 10 characters, just one and the null character. Now, you might be wondering, why the hell am I doing this? Here I have a sample code. I want you to figure it out, so I'm not going to show you the entire code. Let me just run this. It's a little game here. I can press WASD to change my coordinates. You can see my coordinates here, X and Y. And I can keep going. I can keep going up. Right, Y is up to 14, 15. I can go to the right, which is D. Okay, you see X going up. If I press A, you see it going back down, negative, you know. I can keep updating. And then if I press Q, we exit. Okay, it's a very simple game. And just like the code that I typed a few minutes ago, I can type random words. We're just going to get the first letter. Okay, D, S, A, whatever. A, random letters, doesn't really matter. And I just added a bunch of empty lines here. Okay. I just wanted to hide the previous result. I only want the user to see the latest result. And I decided not to clear the console. You can Google it if you want to. But for this video, I just decided not to use that library. Another thing that I should mention is here's another sample code. And here you see me using std string. When you use this, you don't really have to worry about how many characters your user is going to type. We haven't started talking about dynamic memory yet, but for a string, a lot happens under the hood where your computer will allocate dynamically a certain amount of ones and zeros because you have no idea how many characters your user is going to type. Compare that to an int. Remember from video number one where when you declare an int, you know exactly how many ones and zeros you're going to be using. For a string, it's hard to tell. You have no idea whether you're user is going to write an entire essay, a thousand word essay, or a three letter word like cat. You have no idea. Even if you don't understand fully, just intuitively you can tell that by using a string or when you're comparing two strings, for example, your computer needs to do a lot more work in determining how many ones and zeros you're going to be needing. And trying to keep your memory from being corrupted, like our last video, video number eight, you can guess that it would take a lot of resources to do that while your app is running. 
it doesn't really matter for a simple console app like this, but if you're talking about a 3D game where you're trying to use a string, if you try to get a string or try to compare strings, and if you try to do that 100 times per second, you're probably going to have issues. But don't worry too much, even if you don't understand any of this. Let me run my sample code again. For your homework, I don't care how you do this, just try to use everything that you've learned so far. Be as creative as you can and try to come up with your own little game like this. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.